Before we get started with improving our character, let's fix these issues with the shadows here. So go into settings, open the URP high fidelity or whichever you're using, and then have a look at the depth bias and normal bias. Bring these close to zero uh, and those will disappear. I can put them to zero for now and if there are artifacts you can increase it until they disappear. And as well the max distance for your shadow you can bring it down to 50 because we're going to be, be fairly close to our characters and we don't really care about the things uh, that are far away. And as well let's bring down the strength of our shadows so they become a little bit weaker. Maybe 0.65. Alright there we go. Now uh, the shadows look better. Now we're going to focus on animating our character. So right now the character is driven by 100% physics and we want the animations of our legs when we're walking. Uh, but we don't want it to be 100% animated, rather we still want to use our configurable joints. So they are interacting with objects, if we're hitting something it should uh, interact with it and not just go uh, straight through it. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take our knight here and we're going to duplicate him and add knight animated and in our main knight let's get rid of our animator but we'll keep it on our knight animated and then uh, we need to go through our rig here and have a look at uh, the different parts so our spine let's get rid of our capsule collider and configurable joint and we'll keep the rigid body though and we need to do this for each and every of all the objects that we want to um, use animations for and later on we will use this as well to sync the movement over the network so let's keep that the rigid body is kinematic and then we need to do it for the other parts as well so we have the head And we have our arms. And uh, that's it. Now we need to disable the, the rendering graphics of the animated knight. So let's uh, take our knight arm uh, right etc. And just disable them. Then we only have one character which is our knight here. So. Now we need to uh, assign an, uh, a controller for this, so we can start to animate the character. So let's create a new folder. Animations. And then we need to create an animated controller. So animation controller. And just add night to it. And assign our controller. And uh, then we can open uh, the controller in the animator and have a look at what we have here. Uh, so we need to grab uh, uh, an animation that we are going to use. So uh, it doesn't really matter which, uh, which one you're going to use. We, we're going to have one for walking and one for idle. So let's find our uh, knight here. Oh, I need to look at the characters actually. So. Characters, FPX, Knight. And then um, we can either use a walking or a running animation. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but I think I'm going to go with the running. So running A. And just make sure that the animation that you're using is has a loop time checked. So it uh, will loop the pose. And uh, this will start right away. And we'll keep it like this just so we can uh, debug it a little bit and see what's going on. Uh, so if we would uh, hit play now then we can see that okay uh, well we forgot to disable something the, the head here uh, so we need to make sure that we do that but 
let's ignore the head for now. And uh, now we can see that it's uh, not animating the character because it's our second rig here that is being animated. So if we enable our legs again, we can see that it's uh, running like it should. So uh, let's stop it and let's uh, remove those parts of our rig here. So we had a head, the night helmet was enabled. So let's make sure that it's dis disabled. So uh, now that we have uh, our animation set up, what we will do is we will take our animation parts here and we will copy the rotations of our uh, different parts like the upper leg and the right leg and we will make sure that our, um, our joints get that information. And to be able to handle this, we are going to create a script for that. So uh, let's go under scripts and uh, let's create a folder called character. But uh, there is uh, one thing that you need to take into account and that is uh, how uh, joints are handled, how configurable joints are, are, are handled when it comes to their uh, rotation. And it's a little bit uh, complex and um, instead of just uh, writing a, a long script for it, I'm gonna copy one that already exists. And I will add the link to it in the description so you can download it. So the script is called configurable joint extensions and uh, make sure that you install it from the link and once it's uh, installed and compiled let's go into characters and create a new script and we'll call it sync physics objects oh now I'll create a folder a C sharp script called sync physics objects and uh, let's get rid of our folder so let's open uh, the sync physics objects in visual studio now our script here needs to access some things so first of all let's make a rigid body and call it a rigid body 3d this will be the object that is already attached so it uh, will need a rigid body that you are going to attach the script to and uh, then we will need uh, access to our uh, rigid body from the animated rigid body so that we can copy its uh, rotation. And we will also need to know if we are going to synchronize the animation or not. So let's add a bool sync animation, set it to false, because maybe we don't want to animate all the bones. In this case, we are going to start with uh, just uh, legs and then we can use the arms as they are being a bit floppy but later on we can add a weapon to the arms and have it swing with just that weapon but for now let's just add this as a flag and uh, then when we are going to uh, manipulate our joints we need to figure out what uh, their starting uh, local rotation was so let's create a quaternion called start local rotation and uh, then also we need to have access to our configurable joint. So that's uh, also something that needs to be attached to the game object that we're going to use. And then let's fetch those on a wake. So, so in our awake, let's uh, get our components. So use get component ready body, store it as ready body 3D, and get the component configurable joint, store it as joint. And we also need our uh, start uh, local rotation. So let's take our transform local store it as start local rotation. And then we'll create a, the start. We will not use it and not the update either. So we can get rid of those. Then we need a public void update joint from animation. And the first thing that we're going to check if uh, this sync animation is true. If it's not, then we are going to return. Uh, so that means we will not be running this code. But if it is true, then we are going to use our configurable joint extensions. So let's call our configurable joint extensions and set target rotation local. And first of all, it takes in a 
configurable joint. So that's our joint that we're going to use. And then we have our uh, target rotation. And uh, that comes from our uh, animated rigid body 3D. So let's take animated rigid body 3D, transform, local rotation. And then we need to supply it with our start rotation. So start rotation. So then we can save that. And then we also make needs to make sure that we are calling this. And looking at my naming convention, maybe uh, this wasn't the smartest uh, to call it sync physics objects because this is going to be attached to each object. So let's remove the physics objects and call it physics object instead. And uh, let's save that and as well rename this uh, our file to object instead. So there we go. That makes more sense. Uh, because, well, we only have one object and not objects. So anyway, now we need to uh, use this uh, and we are going to use it in our network player. So in our network player, let's add uh, sync physics objects and it's going to be an array and then we'll call it sync physics objects so that we know that there are uh, multiple of them. And uh, we need to get those. So let's... Uh, add a void awake and in our void awake let's uh, just uh, get uh, components in children add sync physics objects and store it as sync physics objects okay so now uh, we have that part done and now we can update uh, our uh, objects here so let's have a look at our fixed update and uh, in the last part let's start the animation process so uh, let's do a for loop for int i is equal to zero and less than synced uh, physics objects length and then iterate through all of them and once we have uh, done that let's take the sync physics objects and the i or the position you can use a for each loop even for this uh, and uh, then call update joint from animation which will update the information in this uh, uh, for this specific joint so now we can save and go back into unity and try it out so now let's go into our night here and find our rig and spine and then we'll add our sync physics object and uh, our spine, we're not gonna animate it, but let's connect the animated part, the animated rigid body there. And uh, then we need to do the same thing for the legs. So let's add a sync physics object and then start with the left leg and uh, find the upper left leg and check sync animation and then do the same thing for the right leg. And sync animation. And then let's do our um, spine here and uh, the chest, the head. And hook up the head. And we're not syncing the head animation. And then the same thing for the arms. So add left arm and right arm. Okay, so that should cover all of them, right? Did I add a spine? Yes, I did. So now we can try this out. So let's hit uh, play and see what happens. So if we have a look at our scene now, we can see that, well, actually nothing happened. And why is that? Uh, it is because our character here is uh, animating, uh, but we have this calling mode, call update transform. So it means that it's not animating if they're not visible. So put it to always animate and then give it a try. So now we have this uh, funny walk thing and we can walk around with it. And uh, it is 
well, doing something at least. It's uh, sort of running. Uh, but if we have a look at uh, our animation here, and if we enable our legs, we can see that uh, there is a quite big difference between our animation, which is this very short cycle, and uh, the animations provided by the character. So why is that? Well, it is because, well, let me reduce the gizmo size here a bit. Uh, it is because when we are doing the animation, we are only taking care of this upper leg. So if we pause somewhere, well, there we go. So if we look at our leg, it is um, it has a very different uh, sort of angle compared to everything else. Uh, so, for instance, here we our our leg is quite low, uh, while the other one is uh, bent, and uh, the bend part is a lot in the knee, not so much in the, this section. So even if we take our leg here and we disable it, uh, we can see that the, the upper part of the leg. Well, I need to actually disable the leg. Hold on. The upper part of the leg isn't that much off. It's a little bit off, but not that much. And it will always be off a little bit because we are using joints and uh, they are, take a little bit of time to get into the right position. We can increase the position spring to get it to move faster. It's going to be a little bit off. But the most important part is that we don't have the bending of the knee. You can fix that by adding more joints and replicating this. Uh, but as we're going to network this, we're going to get into trouble with having too many moving objects that will take a lot of network performance to synchronize a call across all clients, which means that we are going to get into potential problems with uh, syncing everything. So instead, we are going to uh, adapt the animation so it doesn't really care that much about bending the knee. Instead, we are going to rotate the upper uh, legs more instead. So that's our easy solution to uh, this specific problem, which will make it look better as well. So to make it easier, let's enable our legs again from the animation part of our character and our uh, the physics version of our knight let's disable it so now we have our, our just our legs to focus on uh, looks a little bit weird but yeah it helps things when we are uh, trying to animate this so let's go into our animation and we want to use this running a which is read only so we need to make a copy of it before we can do anything with it so let's find our character fbx night and uh, then the animation which is running a and duplicate it and uh, then something happened we need to figure out where did it go running a let's try that again duplicate yeah not worked uh, duplicate and then call it running a custom now let's go back to our animated knight, hit animation and select, uh, well, running A is uh, only there. And the reason is our animator also needs to have access to our running A custom. So let's go and drag it in there and then make this the default layer state. Okay, now we can go back into our animated character here and select running a custom and uh, let's have a look at our rig here so uh, we need to access our uh, our legs which are called upper leg left and right so let's uh, have a look at uh, try to find them control elbow spine so spine is the correct place to look for and then we have our arms and our upper leg and the animation is actually moving the leg a little bit up and down it's adjusting the position but uh, we won't really care about that so let's take this part and uh, we want it to sort of 
show up where we are so let's hit the record button and now we can see that it's actually in uh, the post that it uh, currently has and uh, we have this rotation which is uh, 46 so let's just make it to 45 to make it easier for us to remember then we're gonna remove all of the keyframes here and uh, now we're focusing on the left rotation which is this part and uh, instead we are going to actually I think yeah I deleted the rotation correct so and it hits this part where is it is has the center value and the rotation here we can see is one but instead we wanted it to be full extended backwards so let's make it minus 45 instead and then get rid of uh, all the other keyframes and make sure that it moves back into 45 and then we do the same thing for our right leg here so let's find our right leg there we go and have a look at that one rotation it's starting at one so instead let's make it 45 and minus so it's fully backward and let's delete our rotation until it comes into the center pose there we go and make it 45 and then delete other, the other keyframes okay so now we have a, a bit of a more exaggerated uh, running pose uh, which will work better with our model so let's uh, let's see if it worked let's get rid of our legs here and bring out our model and uh, let's uh, see if it runs better so if we look at from the side we can say yay it looks a little bit better we have some stuttering and that's because it's uh, hitting the ground and has uh, have some friction so you can reduce that by moving up our legs a little bit but I think it would be look quite okay when we are actually walking so we just need to make sure that the animation speed of uh, the walking part is uh, connected to how fast our character is actually moving so let's go into scripts and uh, find our uh, network player again and open that in visual studio and then we need to access our animator so that we can feed it with uh, information and uh, we are going to create a parameter so that we can control how fast uh, the animation is going to uh, be running at and uh, then we need to look at our code here we did some things uh, before like calculating our local forward velocity which is is great for this because then we can supply that to the animator but we also have this check if the input magnitude is not zero then we are uh, calculating our velocity but in this case we need that velocity somewhere else as well so let's move it so we'll take our local velocity versus forward and local forward velocity and move them out ahead of this because we want the character to animate if they are getting pushed as well and not only if the player is providing some input so uh, let's uh, take our animator and uh, we assume that uh, it has an animator now or actually we can get the uh, assign it here in the serialized field and uh, before we are syncing the rotation, let's uh, provide uh, some information to the animator. So animator, uh, set float, and then we'll take our movement speed, that's what we're going to call the parameter, and it needs to have some value. And we're going to use our local forward velocity. And uh, I think the value of this will be quite high so we need to reduce it a little bit so I think 0.4 will be okay otherwise the legs are gonna move super super fast when it's running which can look cool but for now let's try to reduce it and see what happens 
Okay, so uh, let's uh, save that and go back into Unity. Then we need to hook up our character here with uh, the slot for the animator. So let's bring our animated knight in there. And uh, then we need to adjust our animator. So our running a custom, let's, um, let's have a, a pose, an idle pose before we use that. So let's find the knight, knight uh, idle and make sure that loop time is checked. Yes, good. So let's make this default state. And then we need a parameter that we already named in our code and needs to match the same capital letters as well. Movement, speed with an large S, put it to zero as a start. So our idle, let's make a transition and uh, uncheck has exit time. And then condition is if the movement speed is greater than zero, then we're going to start our running a custom. And then let's make a transition back. And the same here, uncheck has time. And uh, then if its movement speed is less than 0 0.1, then we're going to go back into idle. And we need to make sure that our speed here is multiplied by a parameter called movement speed. And we can adjust this, how long it should take before it uh, moves into the walking or running pose. I think it might be a little bit long, but let's leave it as it is and see what happens. And then we can delete our running A here. Um, so let's save that and uh, let's try it out. So now we have our guy here and uh, yeah, he stepped on the ledge and uh, yeah, his legs are animated and when he's jumping, well, they're moving a little bit faster because there is no uh, resistance, no physical uh, resistance on the ground. So we are actually moving faster when we are jumping, uh, which is cool. Uh, but the arms are, yeah, floppy and uh, yeah, I think the animation of the legs works fairly well. And you can extend this with IK or whatever animation system you're using. The concept will be the same, just copy the, the joints position and then you can add uh, as many objects as you want to synchronize. And when I stop the character, I noticed uh, there is a, a tiny problem. And it's uh, it, the idle animation is not working properly. Uh, it is... Uh, See, uh, animating the walk animation, even though we should be standing still. So uh, let's have a look at our night animated and uh, the animator. And we can see that idle is firing and then going into running and back. So uh, I should have paid a little bit more attention on this uh, condition for exit greater than zero. Let's make it greater than 0 0.1 or two. Now our idle should stick and it should stay uh, idle because it, it might be moving like a tiny fraction. So now our idle is actually idling and now the walking is walking and then we go back into our idle again. I'd like to give a shout out to our Patreon supporters. It helps us with every single contribution that we can get. So please consider supporting us on Patreon. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.